the African savanna wildlife has its own unique journey. Here, it is all about survival. Either you are the predator, the prey, or the scavenger. Vultures are very much important in the ecosystem. Um, but uh, people have had um, a misconception about it. We have been seriously concerned about the dramatic decline in vulture populations, not just in Nigeria, but in the whole of West Africa. And this decline is a result of belief-based use. So never judge a bird by its boldness. Because the vulture is bold, doesn't mean, doesn't mean it's evil. That's a general belief. Traditional people who believe vultures are evil. So the biggest uh, threat to vulture populations in Zambia is poisoning. Vultures cannot kill an animal. They just eat a dead animal. So they are not bad animals. Among the scavengers, vultures are possibly one of the most majestic and awe-inspiring creatures who are often misunderstood. They are poorly associated with nefarious activities when actually they probably do mankind one of the biggest favors on earth. They feed on carcasses, helping to keep the environment clean, thereby likely preventing disease from spreading. Vultures provide valuable services that we don't even have to pay for. They are the sanitation workers of the savanna, picking carcasses of dead animals clean to reduce the likelihood of diseases spreading. As sentinels of the skies, they warn authorities of poaching activities. They save the lives of so many animals, even the elephants that tower below them. They are perhaps the most misunderstood birds on our continent. They're like a sanitation crew. They clean up the wild. And they do it so efficiently that they can, you know, uh, digest pathogens, things like anthrax and tuberculosis, so they likely stop the, the spread of disease. So if they're not there, the carcass will stay in the environment longer. It will mean that disease can spread may be quicker because it's in the environment for a longer period of time. Not only are vultures our friends, they play a big role in our habitat. Then why are we driving them towards extinction? Across Africa, vulture populations have drastically reduced by up to 97% in some instances due to various factors. Major threats include poisoning, accounting for about 61% of vulture deaths, belief-based use where vulture parts are used for traditional medicine, accounting for 29%, and electrocutions and collision with energy infrastructure, accounting for about 9% of vulture mortalities, and 1% due to other causes. There is no simple solution to human-wildlife conflict. Farmers often poison predators, which prey on their livestock, and scavengers, including vultures, feed off the dead animals and ingest the poison. Additionally, poachers actually lace their victims with poison, meant to kill the vultures intentionally. Shocking statistic, 500 vultures can die from feeding off a dead elephant carcass laced with poison. And the main drivers towards that here in Kenya uh, is mainly driven by human life conflict, uh, which results to wildlife poisoning. The things which are poisoned end up killing massive, uh, massive numbers of vultures. So that was the main reason why vultures in Kenya uh, have been facing decline. So who do we turn to for help? Who understands and cares about the vultures? BirdLife International cooperates with all of those at the forefront of tackling Africa's vulture crisis. Working with our network of partners across the continent. We have 65 vulture volunteers across the landscape that help in increasing surveillance, 
and uh, also helping to uh, report when they see incidents of uh, poisoning so then the necessary or the or the authority that is responsible is able to respond effectively so for the rapid response is within that network that we have a network of staff on the ground who are working very closely with a network of 65 volunteers who are increasingly uh, showing this, uh, increasingly uh, the, the capacity of surveillance within that landscape, which now enforces the rapid response uh, of wildlife poisoning within those sites. Yes, and it's not just caring about vultures or birds or even animals. It's about caring for our communities, for the delicate balance of nature, for our future generations. Ikaua wanyama sana. Ikaua wanyama sana. Iyo sumu watu meambia ni hatari. Ilikuwa ni hatari kwa wanyama, pia kwa maboma. So what is BirdLife International doing to save vultures? So we're just sort of five years into this journey. And as you can see, the scale of the problem is huge, right? So there's a need for massive scale of collaboration. And that's why the awareness is so important in order to do the advocacy and the policy and the legislation changes. So a lot of our partners have, are able to drive that kind of initiatives forward. In East Africa, the main threats to vultures are poisoning, electrocution and collisions with energy infrastructure. Already there have been signs of success, but there is more work to be done. In Southern Africa, the major threats to vultures are poisoning, electrocution and belief-based use. Electrocutions on power lines. So as we go forward into the future and Africa develops, including Zimbabwe, the infrastructure development, huge infrastructure development in terms of energy, uh, will certainly impact these birds as they are already happening in South Africa where they have much more, you know, larger infrastructure development. Around half a million hectares of land in South Africa, Zambia and Zimbabwe have been designated as vulture safe zones or VSZs. Creating these safe zones means working with private landowners and farmers to use methods for managing their land that encourage vulture populations to survive and grow. Vulture safe zones are mainly areas that are um, freed from um, harmful, harmful threats. So we ensure that an area is free of uh, poisonous substances that uh, could kill uh, vultures, but also other indirect threats. We are spearheading the development of uh, a national wildlife poisoning response protocol which is basically um, a standardized method of responding to incidents of, of poisoning. In West Africa, the primary threat to vultures is belief-based use. Many communities mistakenly believe vulture body parts have healing and magical powers. Thus, they use the vulture parts in traditional medicine. The Nigerian Conservation Foundation is carrying out a number of initiatives to tackle this threat. Working with traditional healers and institutions, NCF is developing a guide for traditional healers for plant-based alternatives to vulture parts. NCF is also working to raise awareness on importance of vultures in the ecosystem. But for certain species like vultures, Direct exploitation is really the major thing right now, and that is the hunting, the, the, the poaching of its eggs, uh, the catching it by snares, shooting vultures, uh, and so on, and mostly for ritual purposes. <laughs> What we want is to be able to say, oh, can we have alternative which is not having animal um, components? Can we have plant is alternative? And luckily for us, the Tradoilas were very uh, receptive to our plants. 
they even came up with all of these um, plant-based alternative that we can use to replace vulture. Because the plant, the root, and every other thing we now use, in fact, have 100% medicinal value, more than when we are using the vulture. In North Africa, electrocution is a severe threat to vulture populations. Besides poisoning, which is still used at the local level in some areas, other threats are mostly much localized in space and time. Uh, example includes uh, belief based use of uh, vulture parts, uh, electrocutions, uh, direct persecution, uh, drawing in small farm reservoirs and wells. Power lines string across vast areas connecting remote villages with power. Now imagine issues that are coming up on uh, power lines and, um, and uh, weed power generation that we have in the country. It end up killing massive, uh, massive numbers of vultures. Vulture habitats are also disappearing because of human development. That cuts their food supply. Poisoning here, as in other regions in Africa, also takes its toll. In Morocco, Grepom, a bird life partner, opened the Vulture Rehabilitation Center in May 2020 in Jebel Musa. Their most recent victory is the reintroduction of the Griffon vulture, which has been missing from the nation as a breeding species for 40 years. Despite all these works, there are still many things needed to be done for the conservation of both breeding and migratory vultures. Unfortunately, lake of or daily of conservation actions uh, are caused mainly by lake uh, of appropriate funding, not by lack of vision or lack of capacity. To save the vultures, governments and local communities, as well as other NGOs, must be at the heart of conservation efforts. Anything should not be poisoned, otherwise we will be poisoning everything. So. We re we've really do done so much that if the government come in and put some inputs to make sure they, they close any, any, any shop that is contributing any substances used to, to, to poison any other thing, the better we will be, we will have achieved the best. Yes, so I say poisoning must stop and, and we must stop even any chemical that can be used in any way because it, it results to poisoning in that way. I am going to the end. One now. Kuma I zoo. Now the end I am paying the sun sun double gig about there. This is I am going to. Now the end I am garden mag and I can't see. Guy the man go and I can't find the sun. Guy the sun sun. The sun and I can't find the sun. I can't mother do I am going to. This time I can't take a cow. Can you imagine? And the I am going to that is one number. I am going to Allah. Further. BirdLife International is engaging governments, bringing attention and urgency to tightening regulations, banning toxic substances that poison wildlife, phasing out the use of lead ammunition, creating protected areas, capacity building of enforcement personnel, and prosecuting wildlife crimes. The Kenya Wildlife Act of 2013 was amended to make it a criminal offense to poison any wildlife. Kenya went on to adopt a wildlife poisoning response protocol. Nature Kenya, BirdLife International and other stakeholders provided input into this act. But our collaboration with government has not ended there. Zimbabwe has developed a first-of-its-kind national vulture action plan. The Zimbabwe Vulture Action Plan was signed off in 2019 and speaks to incredible commitment by government to the protection of these species. We are targeting conservation action uh, to reduce poisoning, deforestation, and a critical component of this is the engagement of local communities and forming vulture support groups. So in Gwai, we have three vulture support groups. They are our vulture stewards and they are being trained and capacitated to monitor vultures, make sure 
that nesting sites are protected and also able to, with rangers being trained, to implement rapid response mechanisms when poisoning events do take place. Our efforts are starting to make an impact. From the medicinal alternatives in West Africa to the vulture safe zone in Southern Africa to the poisoning response protocol in East Africa and the reintroduction of the griffon vulture in North Africa. While some progress has been made, a lot still needs to be done. Vulture populations continue to decline. In three decades, West Africa has seen vulture numbers fall by 95% in unprotected areas. Seven out of the 11 vulture species are now at risk of extinction. It is not yet time to celebrate. It is time to scale up our action. Uh, one of the values that we, we derived was people seeing that vultures are important, showing that there is a shift towards um, appreciating the roles of birds and within that, that increase in, 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 in increasing that surveillance, we have been able to see that poisoning by itself has reduced, but now having a vulture dead or having a jackal dead, people are reporting and that is very important because people are appreciating and knowing that wildlife is important to them. The public can help a lot in stemming the decline in vultures. Uh, the first thing members of the public need to do is to change their views about vultures. Uh, Grapevon is yet to develop a project aimed to, to help the species thrive and even expand um, to adjacent areas. Because they look unattractive to a lot of people, they think they must be evil. But no, every creature is beautiful in its own right. That will be my message to people practicing such, to find alternatives and let vultures thrive, see beyond the physical appearance. A lot has to be done um, to, to improve the, the conservation of, of, of vultures and other birds. We mustn't lower our guard. Um, there's a lot of awareness. Uh, we need to be engaging with the research. More research needs to be done on the species, on the species, all of them, uh, together with our government and um, government agencies. So that is criti critically to, that it needs to continue uh, for us to be able to sustain um, the vulture populations in Zimbabwe. We launched a very important initiative called the BirdLife Africa Vulture Conservation Forum. This idea of this forum is essentially to bring together our partnership as a first step and then hopefully continue to branch out and really bring you know, the collaboration at the scale required to help vultures soar again, as we say. We need funding. $100 could purchase basic poison response kit. $500 could purchase premium poison response kits with a camera and GPS equipment. $1,000 could equip vulture support groups with backpacks, GPS equipment, smartphone, binoculars, and a camera. $5,000 could train 20 people to respond to wildlife poisoning incidents. And for $10,000, this could help establish a vulture safe zone at least 50 square kilometers in size. We need volunteers. We need government's continued vigilant action. We need to create awareness about vultures so that everyone can contribute. And by contribute, we mean save the vultures. Save our wildlife. Save ourselves. Our scavengers are beautiful. And they are more helpful than most of us realize. Let's conserve them as part of our ecosystem. And because we can, through our compassion and our action, let us save Africa's vultures.